Hello, I'm Tony Darton. I'm the Chief Executive of the Galapagos Conservation Trust, the only UK charity dedicated to saving the Galapagos Islands. I'm delighted to be joined by Felipe Cruz, someone who's born in the islands and has dedicated his life to conserving his native home. Felipe is only too aware from all angles, both personally and professionally, some of the challenges we face in Galapagos. Challenges of increasing population, increasing invasive species, and making solutions that involve the local people who, like Felipe, call Galapagos home. Felipe, as one of the native species, why is Galapagos so important? There is no other place like Galapagos, and that is something that we always have to remember that Galapagos is unique for the number of different endemic species that occur there that don't occur anywhere else, or for the fact that there is no other archipelago as best preserved as the Galapagos Islands. And I think that's what's so important, isn't it? That in a world where there is bad news on all, all fronts for us, the fact that Galapagos is still almost pristine and can be saved is actually what makes the work even more important. When I was growing up, there were probably at the most a thousand people living on the islands. Very seldom visitors to the islands, and now we have about 30,000 inhabitants and we have over 170,000 visitors per year. One of the things that perhaps most surprises people about Galapagos is that there are people living there at all, let alone 30,000 people who now call it home and legitimately call it home. On Floriana, where you were born and brought up, obviously the population is still very small, still only 120, 130 people. Um, and that's what part of what makes Project Floriana, a project close to our hearts, so important, isn't it? Absolutely. And what we are trying to achieve in Project Floriana is this holistic restoration, which means including the local population within all the managing actions that need to be done in order to uh, make Floriana a sustainable island. And what it means, or what I mean by that, is that we need to preserve the lifestyle of those 120, 130 or 160 people at the most uh, in, in the long term. So, because in the other islands what we have seen is that that lifestyle that I used to, I was used to when I was growing up, is gone. Now we have cars, we have electricity, we have TV, we have cable TV, <laughs> and all of those things the globalization has brought to us. Mm -hmm. And in Floriana, even that you still have some of that, but it's such a small scale that actually the lifestyle of what I was used is still there. And the Mockingbird has been a project that Galapagos Conservation Trust has been trying to champion with you. Um, how are the Floriana Mockingbirds doing? <laughs> Well, I mean, you might me <laughs> smile thinking of the mockingbirds because, again, that's another dear species to me that I had been dreaming for many, many years to reintroduce it back to Floriana. They became extinct on the main island of Floriana for different reasons, which we don't really know for sure which ones, but by the late 18s they were gone and they survived in two little islets of Gardner and Champion. Champion has about 20 individuals and that's the world population. And Gardner have a few hundreds, which again is the world population mm. of that species, which makes it even more unique, if you want. We believe that it's possible to reintroduce them back to Floriana. That project is going to be a successful, and that I could guarantee. Now, obviously, you've lived all your life in Galapagos and been involved in saving the, the petrels on your native island of Floriana from the age of 12. But traditionally, perhaps, conservation hasn't involved the local people in the way that you chose to get involved. That's changing now, but that's been one of the issues in a place like Galapagos? In the past, unfortunately, the involvement of the local population was not as heavy as it is now, and it was not realised that Galapagos will be an, uh, an archipelago with people. It was still somehow the dream of having Galapagos without people. And that is not realistic, that is not something that has helped us, and we are changing that we are now involving strongly the local population because that is the only way to save this island for future generations. If you could say one thing to the supporters that make Galapagos Conservation Trust the successful charity that it is, what would that be? I would say that we have to remember that extinctions are forever and once we lose a species, doesn't matter where, it's forever and we won't be able to bring it back. 
and in Galapagos we have the opportunity to save 95% of the original biodiversity of Galapagos, endemic and native species, for future generations, and that is a treasure. If we can't save Galapagos, what hope there is for the rest of the world? But there is hope for Galapagos, with people like you on the ground, with someone like Galapagos Conservation Trust, dedicated over 15 years to raising funds and awareness for the islands. Thank you, Felipe.